All right, so I just plugged in the harness and moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. Holy smokes, we got lights. My name is Wayne and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another project where I'm going to be working on the interior of my car, but I promise we won't be touching any interior die or the seats or door panels. Today, we're going to put a new stereo in my 1970 Cuda. Now, when I got the car, it did not have a radio in it. And you know what? At the time, it didn't matter because I was just working on it anyway for those first couple years, getting on the road, getting everything sorted out. But now that I'm driving the car, you know what? It's time where I would like to have a stereo in the car. And this is the perfect time to do it. I'm trying to sort out the interior this winter, have a lot of it torn apart. So now is a good time to install a radio, run some speaker wire, install the speakers. And before I get it back on the road, the spring. So let me show you what I decided to go with for stereo and speakers in the car. I want to keep things real simple. You know, there's a lot of options, but for me, I decided I'm just want to put some six by nines in the car and a head unit. I'm not going to try to put any speakers in the dash because I don't really want to get into that right now. It's always something I can do later, like when I actually want to restore the dash pad. That's something I want to do and I've mentioned before. But for now, we're going to try to keep it simple and just some speakers and a head unit. So let's take a look at what I picked up. Now the speakers, I decided to go with these Focal units. These are 6 by 9s It's a French brand, I believe. And I'm not an audio expert by any means, but... And I, so I ended up doing a bunch of Google reviews and these always came up highly rated in all the reviews and people was genuine, were genuinely really happy with them. So these are 160 watts and this is what we're going to put in the back. Now as far as a head unit goes, I decided to go with a single DIN AM FM, like a Bluetooth type receiver. Um, I know a lot of people like to go with, you know, the factory style radio, like rebuilt and upgraded, but, you know, obviously looking stock doesn't really matter to me. And those are not cheap units, but uh, I wanted to go with what I thought would be a better head unit. And from what I understand, any single DIN receiver should fit in the dash. So I'm hoping we don't have any issues here. This has, from what I understand, like a, a built-in amplifier, so we should get some good power running back to the speakers, since that's all I'm going to run is the 6x9s in the back. So this is the Sony DSX GS80. It had really good reviews. Most people were really happy with it. It always really, was really high up in all the audio reviews that I read, so we decided to go with this route. And as far as the install, we're going to start with the 6x9s. We're going to start in the back of the car first. Now, and let's open up the box and take a look at these speakers. All right, let's check these out. So they come. And these things got some serious weight to them. Big magnet on the back. They came really well packaged, so that's nice. Let's take them out of here. Check those out. That looks pretty sweet. Big magnet. And we have the speaker grill. <clears throat> that's something I don't plan on using now with a lot of these newer style six by nines from what i was you know researching they sit pretty high and they're they're designed to mount you know above the speaker tray and you know cut a hole in your package tray i should say and run but i don't want to do that you know i just bought a brand new uh, package tray for the car but even if i was to sit them down in um, the speaker shelf these things are so high you'd have to cut them out so what's pretty popular is to mount these from underneath. So now that we've taken a look at the speakers, let's go out into the garage and see how they fit in the car. All right, so just trying to set the speaker in the speaker shelf. You can see the body of the speaker doesn't even clear the holes. It's sitting a good probably half inch up. And then this, like I said, is I knew this would be proud anyway, but I just wanted to see you know what it would look like so it's 
not couldn't even work. The only way I could even use it on top is if I trimmed out the hole. But then I would still have to use, you know, cut out my package tray and use those speaker covers, which I don't want to do, which means we're going to go below. So today's hot rod trivia question of the week is... So with this trivia question, we're going to stick with a music theme and 1970. So with that being said, what was the number one album sold in 1970? Think you know the answer? Stick around to the end of the video and I'll let you know. And after I thought about it and mounting these beneath uh, the speaker shelf, I decided I did not want to try, try to use the factory or type your typical uh, screws that you would use for this installation, but all the weight is going to be now on the fastener. So I wanted to use a little more robust screw and I'm actually going to use some lock nuts, which are a little bit of a pain, but all the weight I said, like I said, is going to be on these now and because these are going to be below. So I want to have something that won't come loose and uh, a little more robust, something I can really trust because ideally you install the speakers and you don't ever want to go back to them again. I don't want them coming loose. So one and done, it'll make the installation a little more tricky, but with the light nuts, but I think it'll give me a better result down the road and avoid any rattles or these coming loose. But with that being said, I am going to have to use a drill bit to open up the holes just a little bit. So let's figure what drill size we need and get that done. definitely a little tight if you have an extra set of hands that is great but if not I think we can do this by ourselves so I, I think the most important thing here is I have everything laid out that I need got all my screws and fasteners and hardware my tools and of course the speaker so again the tricky thing is we want to get it in place with one hand try to get one screw in at a time. Now I have a, a washer and the lock nut, so I'm going to try to do the washer first. Let's see if I can uh, make all this work. You got to hold your tongue just right. Like, where's my kiddo when I need him? Oh, there we go. There we go. We got one going. Yeah, I definitely could have went with uh, shorter bolts, that's for sure. These are, I think, inch and a quarter. Probably could have went with three quarter inch little bolts, but that's all right. That's all right. Let's try to do the next one here. All right. All right, that is number two. All right. Cool, we got them all started. Now, just to run them up, I'm gonna use my little driver with a little socket on it. And carefully keep it away from the magnet on the speaker. Cause that thing is powerful and will blast anything. Definitely need the uh, stubby screwdriver. We don't want to tighten it up. We want to do all of them a little bit here at once. All right, all right. She's all done. I'll bring the camera in and show you how it looks. All right, now that we have the speakers installed, it's time to uh, address the head unit. I gotta admit, I'm not too excited about trying to install this thing, but 
it's what we got to do. So let's open up the box and see what we're working with here. All right, we got a little pigtail harness. And it looks like a audio microphone. I don't think I'll be using any of that. Okay, here's the face. Control. All right, let's get the box out of the way. Let's unbox this thing. You know, I haven't put in, I haven't put in an aftermarket car stereo in a long time. Not since I had a cassette deck, probably back in the '90s. You know, so yeah, it's been a while. You know, so there are a lot of options. I chose to just go with a simple AM FM tuner, Bluetooth, and I decided not to go with any type of CD. Just try to keep it simple and uh, focus on what I thought I'd be really using. You know, I didn't really want to be bringing a bunch of CDs in the car. Nowadays, I have so much music on my phone and there's different ways to uh, listen to like MP3s and, you know, Bluetooth stereo. So I think that's primarily what I'll be using, so. That's one reason why I decided to go this route. I mean, pretty simple, straightforward. We have a nice USB port, so that's kind of handy and cool. We'll have to figure out how we're gonna mount all that. We have all of our jacks and we have all of our electrical wires and harnesses that we can you know, tap into. So yeah, the big thing now is how we're gonna mount this. I truly have no idea. Have some thoughts how we might do it, but Let's we'll see how this all fits up in the dash. All right, so first thing we're going to do is remove this trim piece so we can take a look at, see how the frame of the radio fits in the opening. All right, so I just got out this lower dash trim piece and, uh, it's not real fun. You have three vertical screws from the back and three from on the bottom of the panel. And uh, I find it easiest if you remove the ashtray. That way you can get to the three from the, the vertical ones from behind the ashtray. Just not a lot of room to get it all out. But it's out and I didn't break it. So that's good. So now we're going to try to figure out how we can fit the head unit up in here. Okay, I think we're ready now to test fit the mounting sleeve and the head unit in the car. And one thing I really like about these modern stereos is they come with this you know, wiring harness that plugs into the back of the head unit. So that really makes wiring this up a lot easier. So basically I can install the head unit and then leave this unattached and do all my wiring literally like outside the car once I run the wires that I want and then just connect this to the back of the head unit. It's going to make it a lot easier. All right, so now it's time to put the sleeve into our slot. I'm going to have to put the camera down. No good way to do this and show the work. And then what we'll do is you bend these tabs down to make it tight up against um, our panel here. So we're going to mount it to actually this plastic panel, right? So that's what we're going to do. So let me put the camera down and we'll slide it in. Okay, so the sleeve went in no problem, and I just bent down a few of the tabs, um, like here and here, the ones the closest up to the front of the plate, so that would make contact and hold on to um, the front black plate of the dash. So now, I mean, the black plate here, this face plate, is loose because there's a couple of screws that hold on the lower dash trim and keep keeping in place but if you hold this tight you can see it's solid now so now what we can do is install the head unit and um yeah see how she looks all right so we're gonna try to do this one-handed it should slide in no problem now everything's clear in the back it should just snap in you hear those little clicks those are the tabs on the sides 
um, of the sleeve, adapter sleeve, snapping in to the head unit. So you want to make sure those, I don't know if I showed you earlier, but or mentioned it, you want to make sure those tabs on the sleeve are pushed in. That way you have good engagement into the head unit. All right, that's a snap on the faceplate. All right, look at that. It went on just fine. So uh, one thing I didn't realize, again, I'm new to these. Yeah, there's actually a little receptacle, like a little hook receiver on the right side. So you almost have to slide it in and then snap it in. It took me a few tries. I was feeling pretty uh, old and dumb there for a little while, but I'm figuring it out. And now that fits. So now let's see how our lower dash trim is gonna fit. I'm a little afraid it might take some, uh, or require some trimming down here. I don't really know. Um, yeah, I have a feeling it might. All right, we'll see. All right, so I just have the dash trim roughly in place. And you can see we're gonna have a slight interference. Holy crap, okay. Let me try to get this back in place. There you go. You can see I probably will only have to take a couple mils out of this, maybe just below like the radius on the trim panel itself. It's, it's kind of a bummer because it's in good shape and it's an original red one, you know, but uh, whatever, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna either that or I buy a repro one and <laughs> trim that out, you know, but uh, then it won't match, blah, 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 blah. I think we're just gonna trim this one up a little bit and uh, make it work. But here's the little uh, hook receptacle I was telling you about. The faceplate has to slide into this edge or if, if you don't do that first, it'll be sitting on top of it and it won't snap in, so yeah. All right, so I just used some painter's tape as a little, make a little guide of what I want to remove. So again, not too much and I think that'll do it. You know, so let's go get my tool set up and uh, get to hacking up some plastic. All right, so we have my great big Makita electric die grinder with just like an 80 grit cartridge draw, or no, it's probably coarser than that. But um, we're just gonna yeah, get to work, man. All right, so that came out really nice and clean and straight. And uh, we're gonna, we'll go test fit it in the car right now, see if it, everything clears, and then we can uh, clean it up or remove any more if we need to. All right, well, it fits, I'd say, pretty much. Well, I thought I had it just, okay, there we go. Now it's in, now it's all sitting flush. So, sits, oh, sorry, really good, just like I wanted it to. I'm gonna pull out the, the dash trim piece and just kind of a little hand sand, make it really smooth. But I won't install it yet, just in case I have to do anything with uh, the head unit itself. We'll install it very last. I feel like, you know, if you kind of <laughs> button it all up, before you're done, you kind of get cursed and get screwed later. But um, like I said, I'm just gonna untape it, clean it up, we'll put it off to the side, and then we have some wiring. All right, now we're gonna run the speaker wire. This is some 16 gauge wire that I bought actually online just from Crutchfield. I wanted a good quality cable and their prices were actually really reasonable. I really didn't wanna trust Amazon for speaker wire and that. So we're gonna get this ran and then we'll put the connections on and get the speakers hooked up. So I decided to break down and buy a wire crimping tool kit for this job. Again, I bought this off Amazon. It was like 30 bucks, pretty cheap and it comes with a bunch of good connectors and little sleeves to slide over them. And it uh, took a little work to figure out how to use it, but since then I've done a couple in practice and it's working pretty well. So I already have my uh, speaker wire split, um, trimmed. You don't need a whole lot of cable sticking through or wire. And what I'm doing with the speaker wire, this crutch field wire is I'm labeled on one side, and that's what I'm using for the negative, um, the smaller terminal. So the way we end up using this, it's kind of hard to see, but let me see, figure out my orientation. 
What I like to do, these are ratcheting, so you can kind of get it in and in position, and then you can rest. And then what I'll come in, it'll hold your position, just get my wires kind of twisted up just a little bit so you can slide them in. Again, this is the negative, so it's a small, this is negative. We're gonna slide it in. So I like to try to get, and sometimes you have to close the little tabs just a hair so you can get it aligned. So now it's flush. And now I wanna give it a little squeeze through to get the cable in there. And now we're gonna crimp it down. Ah, perfect. So we have the black rubber coming through and that is looking nice. And don't forget to put these on first and then you can slide these up after you make the connection. Nice, let's do the, the positive side. And each jaw is set up for a certain gauge. This is 16 gauge, so this goes in the middle. Okay. And crimp her in. Perfect, you can see the black shielding through the first crimp and the second crimp is just the cable, the inner cable. All right, now we're gonna go run speaker wire. All right, so you can see the speaker connections, you got the cables going. I just have a couple zip ties right now holding things in place, but uh, all is looking good. Then I ran the cables down under the carpet on the passenger side up through the rocker panel up and around and up through the little uh, kick panel up and around and here we have them laying now now we want to be sure we have them labeled left and right that way we can stay organized and now we're ready to start looking at our connections for the wiring harness now i did pick up a little extension for my antenna because there's obviously a short lead attached to it, but I'm gonna need to go a few feet further over to the head unit. All right, well, good thing is that connection was really easy to make. <laughs> I was a little worried it might be hard, but real simple. So easy to get to at the back of the head unit to plug in the antenna cable. So now I'm gonna just have to make this connection to the existing cable for the antenna in the car. And then I'm gonna use some uh, tie wraps Get them all, all the extra tied up nice into a little bundle and probably put them right in this little pocket. All right, so these are the front speaker wires. I have those taped off just to make sure and clear that I won't be using them so I don't make any mistakes. And these four are gonna be for the rear. So now I'm gonna go inside the cart under the dash and wire up the harness to the speaker wires I ran up to the front of the dash. All right, so I have my four speaker wires to my two rear speakers all connected now came out real nice. I'm using these uh, connectors that I found a couple of years back that are pretty cool. It's actually you'll crimp the wire on the red mark and then in between the two connections, the two red marks is actually solder. And when you heat it up, it actually melts the solder um, onto the actual uh, wires. And then on the ends, it's actually a heat shrinkable you know, tubing that'll melt and seal up the wire. So it's pretty cool. I've liked them. I've had I've used them before. And um, yeah, I'll put a link in the video to where I got these at though. So now I'm going to go and make the ground cable. And uh, yeah, moving along. All right, here's a little ground cable I made up. I'm just going to take this basically to the body. Any good ground point will be just fine. And then I'll take the other end over to... Yeah, the pigtail, the harness that goes on the back of the head unit. And uh, yeah, get that dialed in. I tell you, I am exhausted. It's been a long day of making wires, um, uh, making all the connections, finding all the spots where I want to connect my wires to. But it's all said and done now. Now I just have to wrap up the wires and test it out. So this is the last wire I had to do. It's a accessory wire with a bullet, and that's going to go into... A little Y under the dash it is an accessory power plug, female, obviously. So this will plug into it. I already tested everything with my uh, test light. So now we just need to plug this in, plug this back into the back of the head unit, and test everything out before I tuck everything away. So, man, what a day. All right, so I just plugged in the harness, and moment of truth, let's see this thing works holy smokes we got lights let me turn off the uh 
check that out. Sweet. I have no idea, of course, how to operate this thing. Um, yeah. Mode. Nope. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to have to uh, read the instructions, apparently. Radio. Yeah, we're on a radio. Yeah. Let's find a station I know. to Detroit's classic rock everywhere on Alexa, our app, WCSX.com, and now the Odyssey app. If you're hiring, it can feel like you're trying to find... sure made it all worth it you know the car has not had a stereo since I've had it and now we got a system of course gotta figure out how to use it and uh, it's only gonna sound probably so so with the actual radio station all I need to hook it up to Bluetooth like to my phone and uh, have some fun and play with it but man that is it it's done that is so cool I'm so excited it fits awesome that's great okay so I just tidied up the wires Making sure nothing's hanging low and everything's up out of the way and organized and now we can put the dash back together So I need to put the glove or the ashtray back in hook up the little Connector for the cigarette lighter and the dash trim. Yeah, get this thing buttoned up So this is why you take the ashtray out to get to the bolts for this uh, dash trim it is tough to get to and tough to see but with the ashtray out it makes it a whole lot better only way to do it because the ashtray comes out pretty easy all right it's secure I want to do the three over here so just put the ashtray back in and the little lower dash trim panel and everything looks great no wires except for here's the usb that comes out of the back of the uh head unit and there's also one up here as well so that's pretty cool and right now i've got uh the bluetooth synced up to my phone so we can play audio from my phone that's just one of the beauties of this head unit and the one reason why i wanted to be able to go with it is to be, be able to go bluetooth and play from different devices so this is pretty cool so well, that is going to wrap up this project, and you know, I'm really happy with how it came out. You know, it sounds really good. I'm really happy, pleased with the uh, sound and quality of the whole system. So it has plenty of power for what I want. And after going through the manual and getting a little more familiar with the head unit, you know, it's pretty simple to use, and it has everything that I really want. And I'm really glad that working on my back under the dash, that is over, because that is never fun. I really wasn't enjoying it, and to be honest, I was kind of dreading that part of the project, but a little bit of work, a little bit of time, and we got it done, and I'm real happy with it overall. So let me know in the comments below like what you did for an audio system in your car if you have one and how you like it. And so I'm really on the fence if I should even bother with a front speaker or if anyone has done a replacement front speaker in the dash of an e-body or any old Mopar. I'd be curious what you went with. So I appreciate it, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something. And the answer to the trivia question is, so the number one selling album in 1970 was by Simon and Garfunkel. It was called Bridge Over Troubled Water. Well, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And you know the deal. If you turn the bell notification, you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.